Abu Bakr radiyallahu anh, first of the Khalifas, first of the Ahli Jannah. He is the second of the two. That's how Quran calls him. The second one to immigrate, to make Hijrah. The second one in the cave. The second one after the Prophet, peace be upon him, to be Khalifa. Second one to be buried after the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, near him. Second one to be revived after the Prophet in the day of resurrection. And second one to go to heaven with him. He is the second of the two, Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu. To talk about him, we neither have enough time nor fitting words, not capacity. I will just refer to some moments from his life to try to understand how great of a person he was. Abu Bakr radiallahu anh, was among the first Muslims. He also led many great Sahabas, I mean companions of the Prophet, to become a Muslim during the first years of revelation. He was a witness to all 23 years of the prophethood of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. His life is full of incidents that fill the listener's hearts with light, the nur. Even to mention his name gives me a spiritual excitement and sadness. I don't know where to start even. It's not easy to be an Abu Bakr, to be the closest friends to the one who is the light of the world. His life is full of incidents that fill the listeners' hearts with the pure light. Even to mention his name gives me a spiritual excitement and sadness. I don't know where to start even. It's not easy to be an Abu Bakr. To be the closest friend to the one who is light of the worlds, chief of the prophets, our master, Muhammad, peace be upon him. To be upfront in every good thing, to be the most self-sacrificing, the one who stands up against the problems before everyone, to be the most devoted is not easy. Before the prophethood, he was a friend of the Prophet وسلم, for 20 years. This friendship took an eternal form after the prophethood. He was with him against every hardship. Back in his day, to be a friend to Muhammad وسلم, who was a mercy to the world, was an ordeal, a torment, a suffering. It was death and poverty. It is easier to have faith when crowds join into Islam. What makes him Abu Bakr was that he was among the first to become a Muslim, was brave enough of the hard times. May Allah make us an Abu Bakr and give us friends like Abu Bakr. One day, Prophet peace be upon him wanted to perform salah in Kaaba meets pagans. Suddenly, they surrounded him. Ali radiallahu anh tells this narration, some were spitting at him, some were tugging his clothes, some were insulting him. Sahaba, the companions of the Prophet, couldn't help. And there came a brave man from afar. He split the crowd. He said, Are you going to kill a man because he said his Lord is Allah? They left Prophet alone and vent their anger on Abu Bakr radiallahu anh. They beat him up until he fainted. When he woke up covered in blood, the first question he asked was, Where is the messenger of Allah? His mom said, Forget him. This is all caused by him. He said, Please bring me to him. They realized that he won't calm down. Two people take his arms and bring him. Our master, our prophet, cries when he sees him. He wipes the blood on his face. O oh, messenger of Allah, he says, don't worry about me. You are okay, so I am okay too. Can you please make a dua, make a prayer for my mom behind the door? She become a Muslim, she believes you. As soon as prophet raises his hands for a dua, a prayer, his mom steps in and takes shahada, alhamdulillah. Even at that hard moment, to have your heart go out for someone else's faith, this is what it means to be a Abu Bakr. It was the day after El Miraj ascendance. Think about how nonsensical of an incident that is for them. This was an opportunity for the pagans, a tool they thought could propagate. They thought that if Abu Bakr quit following the Prophet Muhammad, the others would as well quit. So they told about the incident to Abu Bakr. They told it in a mocking way. When Abu Bakr radiallahu anh listened to them, he silenced them and asked, did he tell this to you? They say yes. Then he said, if he said it, then it's true. He said that without any sign of doubt, to be an Abu Bakr is to not doubt in faith. It is to say, we wonder, 
We ask questions, but we never doubt. When Muslims' immigration started, he came to the Messenger of Allah. When he asked, should I also go, Prophet was responded, no, just wait. Allah will give you a better way. Later, when he was told that he would be Prophet's traveler friend, his daughter narrates, I have never seen a man cry like this, crying like a child. He was crying out of joy. The travel began. The pagans were searching for the Prophet everywhere. They wanted to kill him. Abu Bakr was walking on his right, front, left and behind. When the Prophet noticed this situation, he said, Oh Abu Bakr, your place is to walk on my right. Why do you do this that way? He says, O oh, Messenger of Allah, when I walk on your right, I think what if they attack you from your left? And then I go to your left, when I walk on your left, I think that what if an arrow comes from behind? Then I walk behind you. And when I'm behind you, I worry about your forefront. So I keep circling around you like that. It is hard to be an Abu Bakr. He would put his life on line for Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He would say, May my life be sacrificed for you, O Messenger of Allah. Then Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, asked, Would you die for me, O Abu Bakr? He said, Yes, O my Messenger of Allah. He asked, Why? He said, If I die, one household cries. If you die, all households cry. All of the Ummah cries, O Messenger of Allah. Being an Abu Bakr means to give responses like Abu Bakr. During the Hijrah, the immigration of Muslims to Medina, some people would recognize Abu Bakr on their way because he was a well-known merchant in the area. During their trip, some people wondered and asked Abu Bakr who the person next to him. Abu Bakr, who was named Siddiq, truthful, couldn't lie and couldn't tell that he is the messenger of Allah because they are going to capture and return him to the Meccans for the reward. At that hard moment, Abu Bakr gives a beautiful response. He says, he is my guide. Even at that moment, he doesn't lie. Yes, he was his guide, his eternal guide. How happy is for one who takes him as guide. When Abu Bakr first became a Muslim, he had 40,000 dirhams. He was very wealthy. And when he migrated to Medina, he didn't even have 50 dirhams. He spent all of his wealth to save Muslims from oppression, for the Muslims, for the cause of Ummah. This is what a smart merchant is. After they reached Medina, the place where the camel of the Prophet ﷺ, Kasva, sat down was designated as the place of the first masjid in Medina, the Masjid al nabawi Prophet peace be upon him found the owners of the land, asked its price. They said they want to donate it. Our master didn't accept. They offered it for a small amount. Prophet peace be upon him asked, who wants to pay it? Someone in the crowd raised his hand. That was Abu Bakr. He, without any hesitation, gave out his last 50 dirhams. Even today, when we pray in Medina at Ravza and put our head to the sajda prostration, he earns good deeds, hasena. Being an Abu Bakr means to be a smart merchant and invest in hereafter. In this sense, it is not possible to pass Abu Bakr radiallahu. Years later, Mecca gets conquered by Muslims. After the conquest, he runs to his father's house. He strives to convince him to believe. He brings his father to the presence of the Messenger of Allah. Rasulullah feels ashamed after he sees him. He says, he didn't have to come. We should have come to him. Abu Bakr says, the terrible one goes to the presence of the great one. You are Rasulullah, the Messenger of Allah. You are the great one. That's why we came to you. His father takes the shahada when he meant to be the happiest at the moment. He drops down and starts crying. Prophet ﷺ asks why he is crying. He says, your uncle, Abu Talib's death come to my mind. I strive a lot of for my father's fate. And you strive a lot of your uncles. Allah granted my father to be a believer the faith but didn't grant your uncle. That's why I am moved. I would also want you to experience this joy so much. In one side, his heart would beat with compassion. On the other side, each one of his actions were aimed for the sake of Allah. In the book called Flashes, 
It says, you should seek divine pleasure in your actions. If Almighty God is pleased, it is not important, even if the whole world is displeased. If He accepts an action, but everyone else rejects it, their rejection doesn't matter. Imagine playing soccer in a stadium with 80,000 people. You get the ball and dribble across four people and pass it to your teammate. He wiped across and you bicycle kick it into the goal. 80,000 people suddenly get up and start shouting, Go! Then you hear the referee blow to his whistle and raise his flag and it's offside. Does it matter at all if 80,000 people shout Go? No, it doesn't. Who makes the decision? Referee. Therefore, you should work to please the referee. It's the same scenario in our actions. Even if all the people applaud you, even if all of them tell you you are the best, you are doing the right thing. If Allah is not pleased, it's an offside. Game is over. To please Him is the most important issue in the universe. So being Abu Bakr means climb to top of the path that pleases Allah. One day after Fajr, Prophet asked to the crowd, Is there anyone who gave a sadaqah charity tonight? Omar thought to himself, Who would give sadaqah at night? Only Abu Bakr raised his hand. Prophet asked again, is there anyone who visited a sick person tonight? Omar thought to himself again, Who would find a sick person and visit at night? Abu Bakr raised his hand again. Prophet asked one more time, Is there anyone who resolved a problem of his Muslim brother? Omar thought one more time, Who would resolve someone else's problem at middle of the night? Abu Bakr raised his hand again. Umar said, You are not going to be passed or Abu Bakr by anyone. No one can pass you in goodness. One day, for the expedition of Tabuk, a call was made to Muslims. This was a call to give sadaqa, charity. Umar radiallahu anh thought, narrates that he has a chance to pass Abu Bakr this time because he had some wealth at that time, but Abu Bakr didn't. He took half of his wealth. He brought that to the Prophet. Prophet asked him an unusual question. What did you leave for your household, O Umar? Umar radiallahu anh answers, This is half. I left the other half for my household, O Messenger of Allah. Sometime later, Abu Bakr radiallahu anh enters into the place. He brings some goods, some money. Our master realized that he brought all of what he was. And he asked with his foresight, What did you leave for your household? He gives an Abu Bakr-like response. I left Allah and his messenger. Umar radiallahu says, I understood that day that it is not possible to pass him in goodness. One day when Abu Bakr is returning to his home, a poor person asks him for a piece of clothing. Abu Bakr radiallahu tells him to come to his door. In his house, he takes out his clothes and gives his last property to the poor person. He finds a sack and wears the sack. The Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, calls him to come. Angel Jibril, Gabriel, comes to the Prophet وسلم, and asks, Who is this person that is covered with a holden? Our Master وسلم, says, This is Abu Bakr. He spent all of his wealth for Islam. He comforted me, proposed his daughter to me. Jibril says, Congratulate him. Allah is asking, Is my servant pleased with me? How great of a position is this? Can you think about that? Allah, who all of the humanity is in need his pleasure of, who billions are striving to please, being pleased with Abu Bakr and asking him if he also is pleased with his almighty being. Abu Bakr cries, weeps and says, I am pleased, O oh my Lord, I am pleased with your destiny. Wow. When the sun was set, the voice of our mother Aisha was heard in the streets of Medina, which still is heard in our hearts. The Messenger of Allah has died, O believers. The Messenger of Allah has died. When our Prophet وسلم, say goodbye to this world and went to the eternal world, everlasting realm, his Lord, his beloved, the Sahaba companions were blown away. In every corner, people were weeping. They didn't want to believe it. They loved the Prophet so much that each one of them would give all of their money, their kids, their life for him without thinking. 
They were so used to see that beautiful face every day, to remember Allah in the masjid filled with His smell, to be inflating with His brilliant smile. Separation has a hit to their heart. This is called love of the Prophet, Messenger of Allah. It burns through the heart. No rocks, stones, irons, nor steel can stand against this love, this inflation. It melts through them. How can a delicate heart can stand? Umar pulled up his sword. He was crying and yelling out. He didn't die. He's meeting with his Lord, just like Musa salam did. Whoever says he died, I will cut him with my sword. There was a scene of desperation. At that moment, Abu Bakr showed up. He recited an ayah that everyone knew but couldn't think of at that moment. Later, Umar says, even though we knew those ayah so well, we thought they were just revealed. Ayat says, Muhammad is not but a messenger. Other messengers have passed before him. So if he was to die or be killed, would you turn your back on your heels to unbelief? And who turns back on his heel will never harm Allah at all, but Allah will reward the grateful. Then Abu Bakr says, Whoever worships Muhammad should know that Muhammad has died. Whoever worships Allah should know that he is ever living, eternal and doesn't die. This is what loyalty takes, what love takes, what Abu Bakr takes, what being a friend to Prophet takes. How about us? What did we put forth in the path that the Sahaba put their life? So we request the same Jannah. If we don't take a lesson, these narratives only turn into past stories that we listened and got emotional for a short time. Why don't we be like an Abu Bakr? Why don't we try to attain the only resume for Jannah, heaven, which is the resume for Iman? Why don't we take the Quranic lessons which make Abu Bakr Abu Bakr? Or did we forget the first order we are ordered? Then it's just the right time to remember. Read in the name of your Lord who created humans from a cleansing substance. Read the Allah's miraculous arts in the universe, in yourself, in a rose, in a bee, in the upcoming spring. Allah didn't create them for nothing. They are not meant to be ignored. They are there for a sacred purpose. As a great scholar, Bediu Zaman says, lift up your head, look at the miraculous works of the most active and powerful being who wishes to make himself known. Just like you are not unattended, so too these events have a master and a purpose. Since they are not unattended, then we are meant to read them, get to know our Creator, love Him, make ourselves love to Him through worship, and make progress to become an Abu Bakr. May Allah bless you. Assalamu alaikum.